Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today on the channel we're going to be playing a team that I took to a PC and MSS over this past weekend down in Orpington. Um, I finished 3-2 in the MSS, so just missing cut there. I think I finished 11th, but... Um, couple of matches definitely could have won one of them and uh, the other one was just a really well played Zerndon team that I just didn't feel like I had the resources to kind of overcome and it just whittled the team down which is a little bit of a, a shame um, but a positive in a way because it's something I can look at at the team and see where we can go and maybe change things up to make that matchup a bit more favourable, a bit more uh, open so we can we can maybe overcome that in the future if I do decide to go on and use this any further. Then the PC happened after that, didn't change teams, decided to stick with it, one more pop um, and finished second in the PC. Only getting defeated by a Chansey and a Celestia Matty running that and uh, I couldn't break it down. The defensive wall there was just too much with light screen support. I Even game two I went for double Geomancy and it still wasn't enough to break through the team. Um, but second place wasn't too bad, got some points, came away and the team did itself very proud. So as always the team is down in the description below. There is a roll pace and a poker pace, check it out and try the team out if you want. Uh, ask me any questions if you've got any about the team or the build in general but we've got Assault Vest, Yveltal, we've got Xerneas, Standard Serena is a little bit different, we've got the Focus Sash in there, wanted to try out Endeavor with that Endeavor Faint, if we ever have a one-on-one -on -one situation with any sort of Pokemon, you can always win out in that situation, unless Psychic Terrain's on the field, and then we've got a little bit of a problem, but majority of the time, you can kind of maneuver yourself around to get yourself in that end position where Serena can clean things up if you have brought it. Also nice with that Queenly Majesty ability just to support against any fake out pressure that you may see. Incineroar Standard there, but we've got Raw on it, I think we didn't really need the dark type attack since we've got a Veltal to deal with that side of things. And we've got Scarf Landorus, it was probably the MVP of the weekend, and then Tapu Fini. So, um, the team all in all really nice. Uh, XY isn't something that we see commonly used in the Ultra Series. Did really well in Sun and Moon Series, but um, as soon as the Ultra Series came around, it kind of fell off a little bit. So it was nice to bring this back, especially with so many Lunala, Duskmane, and other dark, weak Pokemon in the format at the minute. Veltal did really well when I did bring it but um, there's some matches where I felt like I couldn't bring it and I think that's probably why you're not seeing it so commonly used in the Ultra Series but I would suggest giving it a go it's still a very good Pokemon and uh, can do a lot of work against a lot of other teams that it doesn't struggle against so much um, but we will jump straight into it today hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our first opponent and as always, my friends, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please remember to drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and uh, leave your comments down below in the comment section. And uh, we'll get into this first one today. I'll pick some music. Um, but it was just a really nice weekend, honestly. It was uh, it was great seeing everyone down there. So some of our patrons, our Flinch Squad members down there, Will, Costa and uh, Craig were all there. And I managed to actually face Will and Craig. So that was really nice at the event overall. Um, but of course I've come away from it thinking I wish I could have done a little bit better. But um, the PC went on to like half 10, 11 o'clock on Saturday night which was just crazy so I was pretty wiped out I didn't get back to my hotel till about 12 o'clock and then up again uh, really early to get across to the venue for 9 on Sunday morning so I was pretty wiped out on Sunday didn't feel great and uh, changed up teams um, but didn't perform as well and I was off to a very slow start that day so came away with uh, not as much CP as I would have liked but it was it was nice seeing everyone and I think a nice um a way for me to kind of get back into the swing of competitive Pokemon. At least I had a nice finish on the Saturday, that's the big thing, but uh, we'll get into our first match today and uh, hop into Team Preview. Okay, so our opponent is running a team with Vivalto, Groudon, uh, Tapu Koko, Stack Attacker, Incineroar and Lucario. So Lucario probably the mega on the team here. Uh, one thing that we need to watch out for, it does have access to redirection, but whether it's got it or not is another question. Then you're going to have probably Tailwind and Trick Room elements on this team. Tailwind from the Veltal and then the, um, the Trick Room from the Stack Attacker. Um, now the one thing I would say here is that there's probably five out of the six Pokemon on my opponent's team are all physical type attackers. Maybe the Veltal's mixed um, but a double intimidate here can be really really valuable for us. Um, I don't think we're going to see the Stack Attacker lead 
and we've um, had a little bit of a disconnect on our end. So um, I'm just gonna go for Incineroar. I think we'll go Xerneas. We'll need some sort of. Um... Uh, the thing is, I could probably go Ivaltal Landorus here. Or Ivaltal, Incineroar, Landorus, and Xerneas. I think that's what I'd go for. But I don't think we're going to be able to get into it. Because our opponent disconnected, which is a little bit of a shame. So we'll uh, we'll hop back on, see if we can um, find our opponent or our first opponent pretty quickly. That's a bit of a shame, isn't it? I um... ah, I was looking forward to that match because it's nice to play kind of like a similar mirror. Um, and the the Veltal Groudon is like if you're going to see Veltal, you're normally going to see it paired up with Groudon. It makes a lot more sense to pair uh, your Velto with Groudon because Groudon covers a lot of the things a lot better than um, what Xerneas does for Evelto. Um So, um, but never mind. Landorus kind of fills that role in for our team. I will just say that. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent. I'm just going to cut it right now and we'll come back to when we do bump into our first one of the day. And we've got our first opponent of the episode, so we'll hop straight into team preview, see what we're going up against. And it is a team of Xerneas, Rayquaza, Persian, Incineroar, Tapu Fini, and Stack Attacker. So we've got the X-Ray core here um, between Xerneas and Rayquaza. They got support and cast from Persian, um, and then the Incineroar offering fake out support, fast taunt as well from that Persian, stop any setup from our end. And then the Tapu Fini, and then Stack, Stack Attacker, who is probably gonna be the Trick Room setter of the team. Um, and also a good deterrent for things like Xerneas, things like Nilego that would otherwise cause this team a lot of problems. Now, the one thing that I would say on here is we need to probably utilize our double Intimidate, especially for that Rayquaza, the Stack Attacker as well, and the Incineroar. Um, but we also need to make sure that we've got our Xerneas checks in place. Um, okay. We could potentially go Xerneas, Incineroar, Serena, and Landorus. Now, I don't feel like I need Evelto here. We're not really doing too much with Evelto. This is a matchup where Evelto's not really needed. Um, it's not really going to be able to damage the, the Finny or the Incineroar very well. Uh, the Stack Attacker, it can do a little bit of work against, but not a great deal. We're going to have to rely a little bit more on our Landorus for that. Um, and the Xerneas, we need our Xerneas check. So, um, something like in general that we've got here with the roll really helps out in that respect. So I will click in and we'll get into <clears throat> this first one today. I need to get a bit better with the clicky fingers. I'm just the, the, the screens. It's too early in the morning. I didn't have an episode yesterday. It was, um, I was kind of like after the weekend to go back. I was, um, I was so wiped out. So I didn't really have time to put one up yesterday, unfortunately, but we are back today and we'll be finishing up the week with this team so it should be a lot of fun hopefully it all works out pretty nicely so we're gonna see um persian and xerneas come out for my opponent um now do we trade fake outs or do we switch into serena and go for a cheeky geomancy or do we just roll the opposing xerneas and allow it to geomancy that might be a nice way to do it because we could potentially switch into um or we could protect could protect. We could geo. I mean, what's going to be better here? Letting my opponent geo up? We could potentially go for the geo here. It's just if they taunt us. That's the only, only issue is if they go for the taunt um, into our Xerneas, which would be a bit of a pain. And if they detect maybe the Serena switch in, then um, we could get caught up by that. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for the Serena switch in and the Geomancy. I think we'll get it. And if we can get this, ooh, Xenia switches out. Stacks coming in. That's not too bad. We might see a taunt. Like a taunt would probably be a bit more in our favor now. Um, but we are just going to see the fake out. So that's all right. That's not the worst. Um, we need to be a bit careful around this stack attacker. But we do still have. 
Aaron Sinemo to come back onto the field. We're not probably going to be able to stop a trick room going up, but we do have fake out, we do have double intimidate, which will help support Azonius a little bit more. Um, and we also have Albadan Moonblast as well. We could potentially use. Um, okay, so. I protect Xenius. I think we'll play a little bit more of a long game here. I'm going to switch in Incineroar on our Serena. And we'll see what this stack attacker does. It probably goes for a Trick Room, I'd imagine. It's probably the best play my opponent can do at this stage. They might just go for an attack, though. Uh, if they do go for the Gyro Ball, it puts us in a better position going into the next turn. So we're not having to uh, stall out the five turns of Trick Room that do get set up. But like I say, I think the best thing, if I was my opponent right now, I'd probably say let's get the trick room up let's start um pressuring this zernia so it's not able to just freely pick up knockouts here there and everywhere um so we'll switch in incineral we'll get this nice tasty juicy intimidate off onto the stack attack i'm not really worried about the persian right now and we'll just throw up a protect just to get around any potential terrible ally switch <laughs> okay that uh, interesting part and shot coming out into Zern. Okay, well, that's fine. I mean, I don't mind that too much. Uh, we'll just go for a Dazzle. Just get some damage on this stack attacker. And we'll go for a Fake Out into the stacks as well. Um, we just want to start getting damage onto it, really. Is the person sashed? Potentially, I guess. Um, but... I don't know if that... Like, it's going to get a part and shot off for sure if it is. Yeah... And I mean, we could have faked out that slot, but I'd rather take a parting shot than take a chunk of damage from Jarabal. The other option there would have been potentially just going for um, the switch out into Landorus. And get a double Intimidate off, and then just... Wow, we're not chipping in. The, the Sash would still be active. We could fake out into the Persian, and then... Um, yeah, it's not it's not ideal. It's not an ideal situation. Uh, the opposing Zernia is going to come onto the field now. Um, now I would like to try. I think we're going to have to try and roll the opposing Zernia out and Moonblast the stack attacker and hopefully take a minus one. We'll take a minus one. Uh, Jarable. I'm going to roll the Zernia and I'm just going to Moonblast into the stack attacker. Unless we see an ally switch again, which we don't, which is good, because that would have been bad. That does enough, and the Dazzle will get that the next turn. There's the Geomancy, so <coughs> as long as we don't lose Incineroar here, which we shouldn't do, unless we see like a Continental Crush, which would be bad, um, we should be able to remove the opposing Xerneas from the field, so getting rid of their boosts. Alright, let's see. Jarabal. Zonia should take this. Oh, yeah, just about. Um, and if it is the Ray Quasar in the back, we're not really too threatened by... Um, okay, this is fine. Um, now we just switch in Serena and go for another Dazzling Gleam. And that should be enough to get the Stacker and the Persian. And we get around the Fake out that way as well. So it prevents my opponent from really being too disruptive having the Serena on the field. Uh, with that Queenly Majesty ability. The only thing to worry about maybe is Wide Guard, but like you've got Ally Switch, Jarable, you've probably got Stone Edge or Rock Slide, and you've definitely got Trick Room, I think, on your stacker. Um, like, I would say probably m more inclined to have Protect than Wide Guard on this sort of build. Yeah, so there's a Dazzle. This should. Oh, we don't get the stack attacker. Okay. We actually missed the stack attacker kill. We needed, yeah, that minus one coming super handy. Um, okay. It's not the worst. Beast boost, where are we going? Defense. Alright. Right. We've got to deal with Ray. Can Serena shine through in this match? Uh, we'll bring in Incineroar. Get another here onto the stack attacker. And it might be worth... <clears throat> cycling in Landorus at some point. The Zernia is going to come back onto the field. And we could always power whip the, the stack attacker now. Um, and just go for a fake out into Xerneas. But we've got to start thinking about our next turn, I think, more than 
anything else. Uh, I don't think if Trick Room goes up now, I don't think it really helps my opponent too much. We'll bring in Landorus. But I think we've got to be quite mindful that the Rayquaza could be in the back. And we need to have at least one Intimidator in the back when Rayquaza comes out onto the field. So we can cycle that Intimidate. <sighs> going to be tough. Going to be tough. Going to be tough. Going to be tough now. But we'll see what we can do. And Zonius protects. What we're gonna see? Stacks go for uh, terrible. Yeah. Okay. It's a good job. It's like on minus whatever it's on. I don't know what it is. Minus three. Wow. Okay. Um. It's probably a good idea to start getting rid of the Xerneas because if we can start chunking the Xerneas, um. I can't really earthquake. Like earthquake would be nice here, but I'm gonna just U-turn out on the Xerneas and flare blitz into it as well. Okay, well that's fine because we'll get rid of the stack attacker with the the um, the U-turn. This should be enough to take it down, hopefully. Yeah, just about. And then we'll get <coughs> Serena onto the field. And we've got the Intimidate in the back for when this rare comes in. Now, the issue is Serena Sash will be broken here. Unless we see a Moonblast into the Incineroar, which I'm kind of hoping we do. That would be ideal, because Serena we really want its Sash intact. Come on, be into... Oh, it's into Serena, okay. Hmm... Wow, that does like nothing. This is a bulky deer. <clears throat> right, it's gonna be rare, one hundred percent. Come on, my dude, let's bring in that ray. <clears throat> let's see what you can do. Yeah, there's the ray. Okay. Now, are you worried too much about... Right, I mean... Where would you go? Where would you t where would you target if you're my opponent? Would you go Sword Stance, maybe? Because I'm tempted to go for another... I'm tempted to go for the Endeavor into the, to, into the Ray. Uh, I'm going to U-turn out onto the Ray, and I'm going to Endeavor it as well. And I'm hoping we see like a Dragon Ascent into Incineroar and it's not banded Ray because that would be bad but if we can get the Endeavor off now because I don't think that Serena's really putting any pressure on um, my opponent's side of the field other than the fact that it's got Queen Your Majesty and I don't think you're really worried about that right now Delta Stream gonna hit <coughs> hit the field Dragon Ascent come on be into Incineroar please no don't like that. Poor Serena. Ah, okay, well, it does take defense drop, and we're only going to be able to get two Intimidates onto the raid. It is actually Life Orb, which is interesting. The Moonblast coming out now from the Xerneas. Uh, Incineroar taking a big chunk of damage, probably in it. Dragon Ascent range now, I'd imagine. We will take another. Moonblast, but it's where the Protect comes this next turn. So we'll get Landorus in because we've got the active fake out. Can we do this? It's going to be difficult. We need Incineroar's Berry to activate. That's the big thing, I think. Um, and I'm going to fake out the Xerneas. Because I think if you go for Moonblast into Landorus, then we, we can be picked up by an extreme speed. So I think it's probably better that we rock slide. And we can always flinch, can't we? And we, we fake out into Xerneas. Hopefully we don't lose this one. 
I think it's a little bit of a misplay where we didn't protect uh, Zern and then bring in Serena on the on the Persian. I think it would have been better to potentially protect it that turn rather than let it go down to that gyro ball because if we just keep Xerneas around for like that one extra turn then we've got the help in hand Dazzle the next turn gets rid of that stack attacker a lot easier and we wouldn't be in this position if we'd done that but um, a little bit of complacency from ourselves in that respect so we'll go for the rock slide um, and we'll go for another flare blitz into the Xerneas we need some flinches though Come on, big boy flinches, come on, come on, come on, come on, yes, okay, well that's alright, <laughs> yeah, going for the Lando, because yeah, oh, it takes us down, and then I think we just lose now, because we can't, we can't deal with the Rayquaza with Incineroar, unless we can take down this, no, we can't, and it doesn't even proc our berry, so it's done, it's done, good game to my opponent, and uh, I think when you look at on on the face of it, it was definitely that turn where we protected the zone. Uh, we didn't protect the zone and let it go down to the stack attacker. We needed to preserve it there. And I think when you look at the like the rest of our team's makeup and how much we would struggle against the restricteds without our Zernius, uh it's a lot more obvious that we should have done that um, in hindsight. But never mind. Things to think about, um, and it's. I think with this team as well, every turn feels like it's super important in, in these matches. And like you get one turn wrong. And maybe that may means the team's not really um, up to the task in this, this format. Where you've got... Because you, you don't want to be playing a team that you, where you have to be getting pretty much every turn correct. Um, and I mean... Like that sounds a bit strange because... Really, you want to be getting every turn correct when you're playing Pokemon. That's what you want to do. You want to play every turn correct so you win the game. But you, it's it's impossible to do that in Pokemon. Sometimes your opponent's going to do something that you don't expect. And maybe RNG crops up at a time. So you need a little bit of room. It's kind of like a buffer almost with your team. Where it can kind of soak up a little bit of pressure. Um, and, and soak up some maybe players which don't go your way. Uh, and you can still kind of overcome things in the end. But... This team, it did feel like that on the weekend as well. It did feel like you had to get pretty much most of the time the 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 switch right or the, the attack right or the protect right. And uh, if you don't, then it's very difficult to kind of come back from in those situations. Anyway, we will hop on. We will try and find our next opponent. And uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long. And we'll just cut it right now. We'll cut it right now. We'll come back when we do find our next opponent, my friends. And we've got our next opponent of the episode. We've got Meth VGC. So we'll hop straight into team preview. And it's going to be another X-ray course. So it'll be a good one to go up against. See if we can kind of overcome where we went a little bit wrong in our last match. So their team made up of Incineroar, Requaza, Tapu Fini, Xerneas, Bravery, and the Togodomaru. So, um, oh, the, the Bravery is making things very difficult for us to bring our um our intimidate users so we're gonna have to really play around it another way i think i don't really want to proc and i think it's something that my opponent probably will bring to lead with i'm gonna lead with tapu finny xerneas and i'm gonna bring serena in the back i don't think i bring eveltal again and i'm gonna bring incineral um the reason i'm leading Tapu Fini Xerneas is because the Togonomaru is likely to try and go fake out and nuzzle into our Xerneas. Um, and if we've got the Misty Terrain in effect, then it can't do that. Uh, and if they try to go for the fake out turn one, then we've got the Serena switch in. And we also have Intimidate with Incineroar in the back to kind of help us out in the late game. So that makes a lot of sense. We've gone down a, a Geomancy route here with the team. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to lock in. They're ready. So let's get into it. <clears throat> right we need a victory come on we can do this uh, it's going to be tough like bravery is always like a pokemon it's uh, a pain to play against because of that defined ability uh, you've got to be very careful about um, how you switch your ball position around especially if a requires that comes up to the field 
Uh, but we are going to see that and Togedemaru come out for my opponent. Um, I mean, it's not a bad idea to actually just switch in Serena and go for the Geomancy here. Um, I don't know if we'll... I think we'll 100% see a fake out. And once we've got the Geomancy, we can get rid of the, the Bravery. The problem is, if we see, like, a Z move into Xerneas, that could be... That could be pretty bad for us like once again we'll use Xerneas um, early doors and we don't really have too much to get around uh, what my opponent's gonna do hopefully we see it something like a tailwind that would be a lot better for us um, but we'll have to see what what they go for the bird scares me though 100% so we get the geomancy off we do see the fake out from the toga tomorrow so uh, Serena coming in pretty nice in that respect but let's see if it pairs off in this Next. And there's a tailwind. Okay, so that's fine. That is fine. Now we can get rid of the, the bravery. Uh, Togo Tomorrow is not really causing us too many problems. And I think what we might be better doing is going for a faint. Uh, bravery is not going to be sashed. No way. We'll go for a helping hand, Dazzling Gleam. What's a Togonomaru going to do? Like Iron Head or Zing Zap? Maybe U Turn? Bravery could protect, I guess. But the bird definitely will go down to a helping hand dazzle. 100%. Unless it's sashed. But I would imagine Togonomaru out of everything on my opponent's team. It's more likely that's sashed than anything else. So, um, you do get the dazzle, helping hand. Get rid of the. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> the bird goes down without doing anything. Iron Head coming out, not ideal. Um, but it's not the strongest Iron Head in the world, so we're not in the worst position. Um, and then we still have access to our Helping Hand Dazzles or Helping Hand Moon Blasts going into the next turn. Uh, we could even faint the Togonomaru, depending on what comes in next to my opponent. Um, but we'll see. It is the Rail, the Xerneas. You would imagine it probably is in the back. Tailwind is in effect, so we have to keep that in mind. If Rayquaza comes onto the field, it's going to make things a little bit more difficult for us. We probably have to switch Serena out to Incineroar, get an Intimidate off, protect our Xerneas, and then go from there. Uh, but it is the opposing Xerneas. It must be timid, I'd imagine, um, to try and get its Geo off. I'd imagine that's what it's probably going to try and do. Um, but we will go for the Helping Hand again, and we'll go for another... Dazzling Gleam. Because <clears throat> the Togonomaru will go down here. Uh, if we outspeed the opposing Xerneas, like it has to be a speed tie, that's the worst. So we'll lose a speed tie potentially, it gets its G off. But we still get a plus two Dazzling Gleam off, which will do a nice chunk of damage to it. Spiky Shield coming out from the Togonomaru. We could have went for a feint there, but I uh, don't really need to. Dazzling Gleam going to hit first. And that's the big thing. We need to get this damage off before that Geomancy. So that's really helpful. And now, yeah, it does get its Geomancy up. But, <clears throat> and now it is in Tailwind. But there's only one more turn of Tailwind left. So we can potentially stall things out a little bit. Get around this Tailwind. Um, and bring in Incineroar maybe this next turn. Because uh, the opposing Xerneas is going to be faster than us for like one more turn. So we will bring in Incineroar um, and we'll just protect here with our Xerneas. And then that stalls out that Tailwind. We've got access to Fake Out this next turn. Um, and we can just go for a Fake Out Dazzle. And we've also got Serena in the back to bring back in once the Rayquaza comes out into the field. Because it'll try and go for potentially an extreme speed. And we want to try and deny that. My opponent just thinking about what they're going to do. Come on, my dude. Right, there we go. Serena out, Incineroar in. As long as Incineroar doesn't go down this turn. I mean, even if Incineroar goes down this turn, it's not the worst. But I'd imagine you probably want to try. I don't know. You can probably dazzle, yeah. Get rid of the Serena if you can. Um, and then an Iron Head follow up into. The Xerneas. Incineroar taking a nice chunk of damage there and an Iron Head into Incineroar here. So there we go. Let's hear when Pit is out and 
I think one of the things we could potentially do is actually switch Serena in right now. Or we could be really cheeky and go for a roll into the Xerneas, expecting it to protect, get rid of its its uh, its Geomancy. Yeah, because I think Ray comes in now. Oh, it's Tapu Fini. Okay. Well, this works out even better because no Ray in this matchup. <laughs> there we go. Okay. This just kind of rubs salt into the wound. Expecting the protect there means that we can go for the roll. Um, and it, it punishes my opponent for making that play. We get some nice damage onto the Tapu Fini. Uh, and then, yeah, the next turn, we've got the switch from the Incineroar back into the Serena to stop that fake out and just dazzle again. And uh, that will finish up the game for for uh, for ourselves so uh, yeah we'll bring in Serena and then we'll just click that dazzle button and that should wrap things up for us because uh, the Xerneas is the only thing left for my opponent we've got no worries about Ray coming back in but I think this is a really good example of how well Serena can can help control the field on your your end because a lot of players will use uh, fake out uh, support and uh, priority attacks to get around um, boosted Xerneas uh, to slow it down and try and get a board position back whereas once you're set up and in a decent position if you can utilize Serena well enough it really denies your opponent from building any kind of pressure against you or anywhere around your Xerneas setup and because Xerneas is such a ridiculously powerful Pokemon um, that really does help here we're probably going to see a haze maybe from the, the Finny but from that initial damage roll that we did with the Dazzle this should pick up the knockout here um and then the Xerneas to come back in next to the Togedemaru. Uh But we've just got the help in hand. And I mean, what we could do is just to close it out, make sure the Xerneas does go for Protect, just to drag this out a little bit longer. We could always go for Faint, which is another nice option with Serena, you know. You're kind of denying your opponent's ability to um, use priority attacks, but you've got your own in Faint as well, and it also breaks... Um, protects so there we go really nice clean match for us to end with today especially after that first game where I think uh, we just got a little bit complacent in that one turn um, so we'll wrap things up there my friends thank you so much for tuning in I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and we'll see you for another one very soon so I'll be back tomorrow with more action from this team so until then take care and bye bye